Hi, I'm Calista. And I'm Allison, and welcome back to I Don't Want to Talk About Politics, a podcast where we discuss the things you don't want to talk about around the Thanksgiving dinner table. Well, we are back with another late night recording, which I hope is not as chaotic as our um, Earth Day episode, because that episode <laughs> had some chaotic bits to it. But maybe we'll, maybe we'll be learning some new things, like, um, how about where rivers flow to? Maybe we'll learn about, like, lakes today, or mountains. Maybe. I mean, I well, am cool. surrounded by mountains, so. I am currently looking out at the Willamette River. Uh, well, I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day. Callista, what did you guys do for Mother's Day? My little sister had soccer game, so my mom met us at the championship soccer game, and then we had dinner all together. My dad um, made steak. Ooh. We went to up to Bridgeport, which is like 20 minutes from Portland, and we went to P.F. Chang's, and then afterwards we went to Lake Oswego, and there's this like really famous ice cream shop in downtown Portland called Salt and Straw, and they're kind of known for like their like unique flavors and stuff. It's very trendy. Like, um, my favorite was always the boring one, which was, like, Snickerdoodle. And, like, there's nothing, like, it wasn't, like, that interesting. Like, it had, like, Snickerdoodle pieces in it. But I just really loved Snickerdoodles growing up before I was, like, lactose intolerant. And then, um, but they opened up another location in Lake Oswego, which is kind of a little bit past Portland. And so we went there, and because it's spring, they had, like, an entire, like, floral menu so they had like it was like hibiscus coconut lime and a couple other ones um i hate the taste of coconut and they use coconut to make their ice cream their dairy-free ice cream so i did not get to try any so i was a little sad about that but i honestly think salt and straw is a little overrated there's another place called ruby jewels and they have an amazing um honey lavender ice cream and I know that makes Callista like toes like scrunch up because she is in fact allergic to lavender. Yeah. But you can eat like lavender flavoring, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't touch a lavender plant. Mm-hmm. They also have a strawberry basil ice cream. And for some reason it tastes like tomato soup. I'm not kidding. Like, I don't know why. I think it's a basil. Like, the only way that would t- taste like tomato soup is if you have but it legitimately tastes like tomatoes like it's not strawberry tomato basil it's just strawberry basil other than that this is well I guess the first half of this is my last recording as a teenager it is my birthday on Wednesday well I guess it'll be it was my birthday on Wednesday and I'm turning 20 years old and I do not feel I don't know why I'm like not happy to be a year older this year. Okay. Like I'm just like <laughs> great. Now I have to like start like I don't know, being an adult, like applying for credit cards and learning how to do my taxes. Um Costa do you have any, like I don't my family doesn't have like a lot of birthday celebrations. I honestly I don't usually like celebrate my birthday very big every year it's kind of like it just comes and it goes but Callista do you have any like birthday celebrations you come from a big family so I feel like you have like eight of them a year Uh, you know there's well we do for the kids but that's it like every time you turn a corner you'd be like another birthday's coming up yeah like with my cousins, not all of them do birthday parties, so there's really not a lot of birthday parties and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we we did them when I was like growing up. Mm-hmm. I know one of your sisters had a milk and cookies party, and that like absolutely like warmed my heart. Yeah, we discussed that in the Earth Day episode. I don't know if I cut it though. Maybe you did. I think I did, but I just like curled over and like died it was so cute that was in their day episode and tampons 
<laughs> that was a case. Um, for my 16th birthday and I think another year, my dad and I went to San Francisco and it was really fun because he like traveled a lot and so he just used his miles and he had like a trip that day. Can, so we went for Labor Day. Memorial Day? Memorial Day, yeah. We went for Memorial, sorry, it's more like Rev their engine. We went for Memorial Day weekend and we went and saw a Giants game and it was really fun. And we did that twice and it was really fun. They lost both times, but the first game that we went to, they, um, oh, the first game I think I went to, there was a fight and it was so fun. I'm trying to think of like a memorable, birth- memorable birthday from when I was younger. For my preschool, for in preschool, I remember that we did a Hawaiian themed birthday. My sister's had a Hawaiian themed birthday. I remember that I was in a bad mood because my dad took me to get my hair done that morning. My and then I. Birthday, I had to go on the dark party, and right before I got my hair cut, and she cut my hair wrong. You told me about that. Super, super short. Mm-hmm. My, my party was fun, though. Mm-hmm. My haircut was bad, but my party was fun. I don't know. I was like five, but I do remember that my like you know like when no never mind. You were you didn't go to preschool. Okay, so I went to. Okay, so like one of the things is like sometimes if you like for like like if you didn't invite every one like all the girls or something in your class, there'd be like drama at school. And so my mom invited all the girls in my preschool over, but like. There was one girl I very much did not like who was there. And I was like, great, she's here. And she was in, I remember she annoyed me the entire time. Anything else you would like to discuss beforehand? I think I'm good. (laughs) All right, let's get on to the top news stories of this week. Okay, we're going to start with Title 42 which recently ended. Title 42 allowed illegals to be sent back to where they came from by Border Patrol. So this was, ex- they wanted to end it a while a while ago, but the CDC said it needed to be extended, or it needed to stay in place because of COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Fear of them bringing COVID over the border or something. Not, let alone that, that not that, that was their biggest concern. Not caring about like the fentanyl and like the human trafficking and the other illegal drugs and like all the violence and stuff. But you know, we'll we'll just we just okay. gotta wait. COVID. You know, obviously, COVID's the issue. Mm-hmm. Well, that ended at eleven fifty nine Eastern Standard Time last week. Mm-hmm. So on Thursday. So now our border is literally wide open and we can't we can't send anyone back at all. It can't touch them. This is ridiculous. Like it makes me mad. It's like, like watching some of the videos of people crossing this week and then like the shelters. I was like, this is so sad. Like the border cities. They're, the poor border cities, like, literally can't do anything. They're overridden with all of these illegals now, but they can't do anything about it. Yeah. And, like, they're not the ones that are, like, voting. They're not the ones that are voting this and, like, voting and, like, advocating for this. It's the cities that are not, it's the states that are not border cities that are advocating for this. Please. Mm. And, like, they just are, like, oh. Because then they all go back to, like, Martha's Vineyard. Like, all these legislators, like, go back to, like, their little houses in, like, Martha's Vineyard and, like, just, like, find more ways that they can, like, use legislation to line their own pockets. The other thing is totally unrelated. Well, it's sort of related to this. But I saw something earlier this week, a video of just men crossing the border. I'm like, why are just men crossing from Mexico? 
like I think it was only in one border area, but there was like no women, no children, just That's very like, odd. hundreds of men. And I'm like, slightly concerning. Like what it's, what is their goal? That's very, very odd. I was like, like some of the border crossings do have families, but this one particular one just had men crossing. Like, what are they running from? Where are they going? What's their goal? <laughs> I need to know the answers. <laughs> but yeah, the four border cities are completely being trashed by all of these people, like, marching in. Because they basically can do whatever now. And they don't... They say they have to follow the same rules. But I, I'm very much on the illegals kind of get to do whatever they want. Yeah, and like Costa's billions of dollars in taxes mm -hmm. and then they go to like school then they go to like college and stuff and they get like so many scholarships and stuff and then like people who I don't know have like other siblings but both their parents went to college are but don't get any um don't get any like financial aid because apparently their parents make too much and are both educated get punished for it where people who come here illegally get full rate scholarships exactly not that i have any issues with our financial aid system no issues at all it's perfect i love it no issues you love fafsa fafsa is great I promised myself that when Biden, if the if the college reparations thing ends up passing, that I won't take it. Like in the same reason that I never have applied for an for any sort of like racial scholarship. Mm -hmm. But then, then I think about like the loans that I'm going to be taking out for like law school and stuff, and I'm like, uh it's so hard but to see. Also, the way it works, it, like, punishes everyone that didn't go to school. Yeah. And so, like, then I'm like, well... At least I'm going for a useful degree. It's not like it's women's history. Like, I'm going for a useful degree that I'm going to use to benefit other people because I want to be a judge. But I do. I, like, I live... Like, I would never... Like, it's the same reason I never have applied for, it's like why I'm anti-affirmative action. The same reason I never applied for any of those, like, Black diversity scholarships. I've, I've debated on applying for one just to see if I could get one. <laughs> if you get a Black diversity scholarship, I'm going to unfriend you and I'm going to unfriend you. Just both on, I'm going to, you know what, we can still do the podcast, but I am going to unfollow you on Instagram. <laughs> Okay. Like, our friendship will stay exactly the same, but you will know that I no longer follow you on Instagram. <laughs> okay. But the mayor of um, El Paso, Texas, as well as two other city, tex city Texas, Texas cities. <laughs> Not um, real city, yeah, city Texas. <laughs> city Texas. <laughs> El, El Paso and two other Texas cities declared a state of emergency in anticipation of the ending of title 42 i almost said title 49 again at city cities the border cities are struggling with shortages and stuff now too like it's just it's crazy mm -hmm. um. all on that <laughs> So not only are they attacking your cities, but they like I come from we both come from sanctuary states. Uh-huh. So even if Title 42 was still in place, this would be affecting us. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need a diagnosis on this before. I need someone to diagnose me with something. My left eye has been twitching for like seven days and it is driving me crazy and i need someone to like reach out and be like here's how we can fix it because i literally told calista i was gonna start banging my head with a rock until it stopped twitching please don't do that and also seven days what about all the times when we were still at school okay but it wouldn't twitch as much when i was at school like it's been consistently twitching for seven days like every couple of minutes it's just good i'm worried i'm gonna like freak out one of my customers one of these days <laughs> Okay. Oregon's 
Congress is in um, session. Sorry. Yeah, yeah we're Oregon. Washington switch. Yeah, we're in session right now. And this is kind of a funny story because it does kind of have a happy ending. Um, so there is a bill that was passed in the House called the House Bill 2002. Um, and so Oregon's House has a supermajority, obviously Democrat, but they have a majority in the Senate Democrat, but not a supermajority. So if you don't understand how that works, with a supermajority, basically, if they basically with a supermajority, like if they all agree on something to get voted through, like no matter how many of the Republicans vote on it, like it's just gonna go through. Mm-hmm. So, like, so this bill um, is surrounding um, gender affirming care and abortion. So, basically, at the heart of what this bill is doing, it is lowering the age of consent for medical procedures from, I believe it was at like 17 to 15. So anyone 15 and older can get an abortion and any type of gender affirming care. And they like list out some specific ones without their parents' permission or knowledge. And the doctors do not have to tell them. Like they have no legal obligation to tell them. I think sometimes, I think it like might even be like a HIPAA violation if they do tell them in some cases and it can, you can charge it to your insurance and everything and they can't be held accountable for it. They're not like held accountable for it. And they also cannot be penalized if someone from a different state comes and gets it as well. Um, It also says that there is no, um, it also says that there it that physicians can prescribe any uh, type of birth control to basically anyone all ages. And so the article that I read was like pretty ambiguous about it being like, birth control might be abortion, but I believe that birth control is just straight up birth control. They, um, they voted it through. And so then it goes, so when you're passing a bill, it starts in one of the chambers and they vote that bill, that version of the bill through, and then it goes to the other chamber, and then the chamber will have a what do they call it? Um, a committee, and the committee will review the bill, and then they will make their own version of it and like vote it, and then the two bills will get compared and they will choose the better bill and vote that one through. And then it's up to the governor to sign it into law or to veto it. And if they veto it, it goes back to the chamber, they make adjustments, and they send it back to the governor. And if the governor vetoes that one, then it's completely off the table. So it got voted in the House, it was sent to the Senate, the Senate made adjustments to it, and then they were going to vote on it. So if... They were gonna if it, they, we have they have a, Democrats have a majority, so it would have been voted through. But here's something that the Republican senators did: they just left. They just all got up, and they they like they just didn't show up the next day, and they staged a walkout. And so basically, what they're doing is they're waiting it out until the legislative, the congressional session ends, so then they can't vote on it. And so once it ends, the only way, so once this ends, this bill is completely off the table. And so you'd have to, so then for this to be gone again, it have to be, it have to go back, get significant changes to it so that it is not the original bill that was voted on in the House, and then somehow make its way back onto like i don't know like bracket i can't explain it like bracket of what the house will vote on and go through all again but the chances of that happening is like slim to none like that just doesn't happen so they've been on uh they've staged they're on the 10th day of their senator walkouts for 10 days and um i believe that their congressional session is ending very soon so it's good news that this vote, this bill will like uh I would say chances are like ninety nine percent that this will not be passed. And the funniest part is this is not the first time that the Republican senators have done this. So back in twenty nineteen, there was a bill that was going to go through that was going to cap the carbon emissions, um, 
for like industrial complexes and we have like a big airplane factory in the state that provides a lot a lot of jobs and so if we did this carbon cap they would leave and it would take away like thousands of jobs so once again it went to the house it went through the house it got passed and it went through the senate and so that next day when the senate was going to vote on it they just didn't show up and so the person who was like residing over the senate like called up kate brown who was the governor at the time it was like yo we're missing the Republican senators. And I think there's 10 at the time. And so they literally just like sent the Oregon State Police to search the entire Capitol and they could not find that. And so then they were like, they are really actually missing. And so they just like went looking for them. And these senators were gone in the wind. Like two of them drove the Washington. One of them bought like two burner phones and a whole bunch of them just like went and stayed in Ohio, Idaho. Like, they just hid out in Idaho, and they literally threatened to send the National Guard to go find them. But, like, no one knew where they were until the congressional session ended, and then they all just, like, popped back up the next day, and were like, hey, sorry, guys, we, like, turned off our phones. Actually, we forgot that we had a family vacation planned. Oh, what's, were we supposed to be out? Oh, I'm so sorry, that totally slipped my mind. I forgot to write that down. I forgot that was part of my job. That was, yes. Oh, yikes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had an appointment in Idaho. I like, and I am convinced that like every year, I told the series to Amanda the other day, that like every year they have like a, the block of dates that the Congress is in session um, blocked out at like an Airbnb in Idaho so that like, in case there's a, they like see a bill coming up and they like call up the dude we like we will be there in like 12 hours and then they all get in like a van and just like drive over to Idaho yeah um I just think it's like the funniest thing on the planet and I definitely feel like if I was on the other side I'd be like this is ridiculous they shouldn't be doing that but like you know what for once I'm like for once I'm gonna like admit my bias and say this is really funny and I appreciate this. And I also have never heard of this happening in another state. So I don't know if it's just the way that our Congress works that this happens or if it's other states too. It definitely does not happen in Washington. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should call up your governor. You should call up your senators and be like, hey, this is what these Oregon senators are doing. Why don't you give it a try? Unless you have. I, if, if I was calling up my governor, I would have other things to say. Okay. Or your like local senators, but I am uh, I don't know if Washington has a supermajority in both chambers though. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what's happening in Oregon. Like that's what's happening in Oregon. And like I feel like that's kind of the only one of significance that is gonna be passed. Um oh, crap, I forgot to vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was supposed to take my ballot in today. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, well, I guess I don't get to vote. I mean, it was just for, like, school board and stuff, but, yeah. I know the person who's, who is, I sing in choir with her. But, like, I, I guess I still do sing in choir with her. Yeah, I know her. She's pretty cool. Okay. All right, our last story. So, New York hotels have decided to kick out veterans and replace them with immigrants. Hmm. Are these legal or illegal immigrants? They're illegal. Hmm. Because it all happened right after uh, Title 42 was up. Mm -hmm. I had to think about which title. <laughs> okay. I was also thinking 49. You really got that into my head. So this is not the longest news story, but it's very important. 20 veterans were kicked out to make room for illegals who were coming from the listing of Title 42. A New York Post article says the outrage grows over the veterans being kicked out of the hotel. Do you know why the out the people are outraged? Do you? Maybe, maybe because we're putting illegal immigrants instead of the people who like risked their lives and like left their families and went through like basic training and like months on end like out in like the desert to defend us that are many of them you know suffering from pds pdsd 
PBS. <laughs> yeah. Watch a little bit too much Martha Speaks. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember what was on PBS. PBS. Oh, that was like um, Word World and like Super Y. That's what was on PBS. Super Y. Super Y. And Wild Kratz. I loved Wild Kratz. Yes. We had this discussion at the zoo while we were sitting with a lemur. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> but we apparently care about not even U.S. citizens more than our citizens. Uh, one of the spokesperson for the Eureka Israel Tony Foundation, which is who was placing these veterans, uh-huh. said, we are trying to regain the trust. They they're very upset because of how they have been replaced, and we are too. <laughs> You want to know why they're very upset? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they took their home and gave it to someone else, putting them on the streets again. Yeah. It's like how they like to treat our veterans. It's like how they don't fit. Like they're like, it's almost like okay, you know, <laughs> you know. Okay, I feel like we've all had that like one friend who, like, is, like, all about, okay, like, I had this friend, you know, yeah, I had this friend, and she would only post her skinny friends, like, she would only post pictures of her and her, like, other skinny friends, so, like, ruin her aesthetic and stuff, and, like, that's what they're doing, like, they only will be, like, like, look at what we're doing for all these immigrants, like, no one cares about these veterans, because they, like, don't fit, like, they, like, aesthetic of like who they like who are like the like I don't know like oppressed people yeah it doesn't fit their narrative and like like think about like how like I always think about how like the left is very like guys the blacks are so stupid and oppressed Mm -hmm. like look how dumb they are we need affirmative action like look how dumb they are we don't need voter ID like all this type of stuff and then they're like but like then they're also like you know who but like affirmative action like actually affects like negatively the most Asians Uh and so they're like we don't care about the Asians exactly and like the like I just feel like like any like Asian like first gener first or second generation like Asian American just like it absolutely screwed over by the left. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Republican Congressman Mike Lawler, who represents Rockland, Putnam, Duchess. Apparently we're Duchess? going to Apparently, we're going to England all of a sudden. These sound like names from the Aristocats. <laughs> and um, what Westchester counties mm-hmm. uh, said it is absolutely outrageous that homeless veterans would be displaced to evaluate, uh, alleviate New York City's migrate, migrant crisis. The mayor, Eric. Adams would choose to endanger the welfare of our veterans speaks volumes to what debacle this has become. Mm-hmm. Like that's it's just so sad. Mm-hmm. Let's get into our main topic of the week. Okay. This I don't little... know what was, but I just did. This little spiel is rough. So don't judge me because sometimes I'm quite proud of them and sometimes they're really bad. Okay. So Florida, once like California and New York, has become a safe haven for conservatives to um to to flee from high gas prices, astronomical taxes, and borderline satanic legislation. And looking at you, Washington. I'm not. I'm not a part of what they their decisions. 
Don't give me that look. Republicans and even some liberals um, are fleeing blue states in masses um, to red states such as Texas, Tennessee, and even swing states like Arizona. These red waves is what we're refer- referring to as the conservative exodus. Yeah, I guess like to, int- to to kind of talk about, I feel like this is something that doesn't get talked about like a super mat- lot, but like we're essentially like seeing this pattern in like all these people who like live in especially like conservative like commentators and stuff who originally lived in kind of more liberal states are going yeah. to specifically like Florida and Tennessee and then like sometimes like not as much Texas anymore but a lot of people are moving to Florida and Tennessee like I feel like Texas used to be like the place to go as a conservative but now it's like Florida because of DeSantis yeah and like they're leaving all these liberal states because like California and New York and stuff but it's kind of like I don't know I guess like the question that we're asking is like is it our is it is it like our duty as Republicans to be like the ch- like this to, to like see out change in our own political like in our states even despite the fact that we are the minority or is it more beneficial for us to go like absolutely like pack these red states i don't know passing the mic to you calista what's the what's the what is the the media saying about this like hard to find an article there's a lot of Actually, there wasn't even a lot of opinion pieces. There just wasn't much on it. So I don't know if, like, they just decided it wasn't important to discuss Mm -hmm. or what's going on. Or they're just, like, not noticing it. Mm -hmm. My nose is starting to stuff up, so if I sound weird, sorry. I feel like I take notice of it from, like, in conversation with people, but not as much, like, a like a media thing, like in commerce, yeah. especially like whenever we go to turning point meetings and everyone's like, I want to move to Florida. I was like, hmm, hmm. And I feel like it's something that I don't, I feel like it's been, it's become such a part of Republican culture, especially like specifically to people who grew up in like very liberal states. I think it's, mm-hmm. I feel like it's mostly a West Coast thing, honestly, to be yeah. like, yeah, like, like as soon as I can, I'm like packing up and like moving to the South. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, Maybe like, it seems like to us it's like a West Coast thing because we're from, we only hear this side of the country because we're from here. Mm-hmm. but yeah I don't know and a lot of it's like um, they really saw a jump during like 2020 and after that because of COVID restrictions like not so much in 2020 but like 2021 and 2022 when there were still states with COVID restrictions so people were like fleeing the COVID restrictions more so than the mm-hmm. actual state yeah so I found a piece from David Brooks. And I just found this statement extremely interesting. He goes, I have only one question. If we're right, so I'm taking it, he leans more left. He goes, why are so many people leaving blue states so they can live in red ones? That that statement really blew my mind. Like I have no idea what he's trying to say. I think he's trying to say what I see it as is because they're like Oh, so if the left is the one who is in the right, like has the moral high ground, then why are so many people leaving? That's a good yeah. question. Like that's mm-hmm. yeah, like if the left are in the moral high ground, then like why do all the left leading then why do like the three biggest cities in the country have the highest rate of poverty and like the highest rates of crime oh so in an npr article it says 
Residents have been fleeing states like California with high taxes, expensive real estate, and school mask mandates, and heading to conservative strongholds like Idaho, Tennessee, and Texas. This article's from 2022, so that those were, like, the states that mm-hmm. people are fleeing to. And, like, that just goes to show, like, this other guy's question, like, if we're in the right, why are, why are, why is everyone leaving? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe because high taxes, expensive real estate, and school mask mandates, because, again, this was 2022, so some mm-hmm. of the uh, states still had school mandates. Yeah. School mask mandates. But, yeah, I'm just like, just um, I like listed like the four main reasons why people are leaving, and I feel like the number one is obviously politics. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like that's why we're talking about this. Like, that's like why we're talking about this because obviously it's it is an, an intensely political issue. Like, people like don't want to live under these legislators who are taking all of their tax like hard-earned money and increasing their taxes and then giving it to the people who aren't working as hard Uh, i I would say if you don't look at it from a political perspective it's a religious one too because people are leaving to find states that Mm -hmm. they might not care about politics but they have enough moral compass to know that if your state is hiding transitioning kids from Mm -hmm. their parents That's not morally right. Mm -hmm. So, like, their religious compass could be guiding them. Um, Another one is obviously money. Like, honestly, like, taxes are insanely high. And, like, insanely high in liberal states. It's in liberal states. Like, just look at Oregon. Like, we don't have, we don't have a sales tax. But we do have insanely high income taxes and um insanely high like income taxes and insanely high property taxes yeah and, like uh, it's just and then it's not going towards the thing like uh, it's not even going towards the things that it should be like i maybe you could understand if it's going towards the things that it should be but it's not like we have such a like obviously we are like known for having like such a bad homeless thing like it was not until I like went to like other cities like other states that I realized that like most people like don't understand what it like a what like a tent village is yeah like most people like don't understand like most people are not used to like going to like going into town and just seeing like your entire local park just be like tents Mm-hmm. Um, another third reason is school district slash curriculum. Um, I would like to say somebody who grew up in public school. I feel like we've been getting a lot. Of, I feel like I've. I don't know why, but on my TikTok, I've been getting a lot of public school hate lately, and I don't know. If, I don't know if Calissa like hacked my algorithm or something, but like every like every like okay. third video I scroll through, it's like, why are you like, why are you so dumb? Because you went to public school. I'm like, I don't feel dumb. Like, I don't feel like I was dumb for going to public school. And, like, I'm not saying, like, Calista. I'm not, like, saying, like, mm, <laughs> no, no, I was, like, personally attacked, like, five different times this morning when I was scrolling through. And, like, it really, like, put me off for the day. And I've definitely been on a rampage being, like, I am not a dumb idiot for going to public school. <laughs> like, I, I'm, like, very pro. Like, it just depends on the kid. But the obviously like the curriculums, especially with the book bans that they're doing right now and the books that are being seen in around, like that is a factor for people. Mm -hmm. Like I definitely support school choice and stuff. And obviously, obviously I believe that like honestly, like I'm very much in the mindset that like it's depend on what works for your kid like I feel like I did very well in public school in the way that I think that the way that like public school runs and like that type of stuff I think it worked really well for me but I think someone like my little brother probably would have benefited a little bit more in like private school no maybe not I don't actually I don't think so but like I think that some people they benefit more from being homeschooled or private school or something or charter school or something like that um last thing is obvious last thing is it's a culture thing 
um, when you live in a very liberal city, it really kind of affects like everything in the way that it affects like everything surrounding your culture and stuff. Like I talked about this last week, kind of like being on, I like for a lot of time, I did feel like I was like on the defense and I like, I don't like, I don't necessarily think I don't necessarily, like, I don't believe that I would have had it, like, any other way. Like, I, lo- I like, I like, like, most of my friends are liberal, and I'm fine with that. But, like, it affects, like, a culture thing. Like, when you go downtown in Salem, like, all the, like, the specifically the small businesses will have signs that, like, have, like, Black Lives Matter and, like, hands up, don't shoot, like, all over their businesses and stuff. And, like, t-shirts and stuff like that. I'm specifically thinking of one that's in downtown Salem. And it affects, like, every... It it does very much affect like the culture surrounding your city and like I don't know like if you drive through Oregon like it's small chance you, there's very limited chance that you're gonna see that many American flags around or like if you do like they're like not taken like it's very low chance that you're gonna see a lot of American flags and, especially and then you, and then you drive through Mo- Montana and every every property has at least two american flags and about five trump flags but you know Mm -hmm. as somebody who just drove through montana two weeks ago yeah and like sometimes and like honestly there are some like actual real races in oregon there is a guy who like is just parked in the planet fitness near my house that just like has a confederate flag i also delivered to someone who had a confederate flag and it was not a like it was not a uh what do you call it um like hands-free delivery where i just like leave it and like just put on the doorstep and leave but i definitely treated it like one i was like i don't think i want to have a conversation with these people exactly like i was like i don't think that i i i don't i was like i don't think that there would be a lot for for it be a beneficial for me to have them open the door and be like here let's like sort through you giving me a cash tip and so maybe like a bullet in my head yeah but no that's like the four reasons i didn't even think about religion but i guess that makes sense yeah with the religion thing so many people are like well i don't bother with politics i don't want to talk i don't want to talk about politics i don't want to talk about politics <laughs> or like I, I don't care about politics do what they can do what they want but then like they have this moral compass saying like oh killing babies isn't a good thing mm-hmm. sheltering kids from their parents who want to transition not a good thing but they don't like see it as a political issue they more it's just like their religion yeah. religious compass being like oh maybe god doesn't want us to kill our children Hmm. and then and like at the like at the end of the day it's like hard i have a real struggle on finding where i fall Mm -hmm. i don't want to live in oregon for the rest of my life just because i don't want to live in oregon like there's no i have like honestly there are things that I absolutely love about Oregon like I always I like I said I want to live somewhere one day where I can raise my kids in the four seasons because like that's the best thing about Oregon is that we have like four like our falls are some of the prettiest falls that you can get our some our springs we get all the cherry blossoms and stuff winter it snows like twice and it's just enough that it lasts for like three days and then we have like beautiful like 80 to 90 degree summers yeah I definitely the four seasons. Uh-huh. No way. I, well, actually, the only way I would live hmm, it's a potential I would move to Arizona, but not. It would bug me not having the four seasons. Like I miss yeah. the four seasons. If I was in Arizona, I think I would go up towards Flagstaff. Yeah. Like I wouldn't stay in Phoenix, but I definitely do not want to live in Arizona. Like I know for like. Unless I get a job there, that's the only. Uh But, like, what's I going to say? I would live in Spokane. Uh Like, just continue living here. Like, I like it. But, like, 
I see why the people are moving to these more red states because, like, you vote and you don't feel like your vote's counting. So it's, like, mm -hmm. hard. Especially when they call the Senate race. Or... Mm -hmm. I think it was the Senate race. They called one of our races when it was 50% counted. Hmm. It was like, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, like, I can see it. Like, I just, I don't, I honestly, like, don't have, like, my preference is going to be based on, like, honestly, the type of climate and, like, maybe expenses. But there's nothing in me that will, like, prevent me from, like, living in, that will be, like, I absolutely don't want to live in that state because it's a blue state. Other than California, but that's... Other than California. Other than California, that's just because I don't like California and, like, Illinois because I don't want to be shot. Yeah. I guess... Oh, actually, mm -hmm. As long as you stay out of Chicago, oh, you're fine. Yeah, but then it's just the Midwest. Because my old <laughs> roommate is in Illinois. Yeah, but I, then it's just the Midwest. And I definitely don't want to live in the Midwest. You're like, so I only have these certain requirements, but also add these ones to no, it. No, 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 no. Because whenever we go and visit my family in Minnesota, the only other Black person I see is my brother for like five days. And like I'm not like you, you know I you know I'm making that a requirement. I do want to be on like any given day, be able to see another person of color, like no one, not a single person of color except for the airport, and not employees of the airport. People getting on international flights in the Minnesota airport, so it's not even like people flying locally. It's like international flights. I'm like, oh, you're flying back to like Arabia. That's fantastic. <laughs> Like, in order for me to see another Black person that day, I would have to actively go find my brother and look at him for, like, ten minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure I got three shades lighter being in Minnesota. So, yes, I will, I, will, I will say that I want my kids to be able to, like, wake up every single day and see another person of color, and that's not me just being, like, mm, diversity. I, you know what? I stand by that. I want my kids to live in somewhere that is at least a little bit diverse. Okay, I was I like a weird gonna say something, but I don't remember now. <laughs> I have like a weird personal hatred of the Midwest. But you also forget you're black half the time. You know what? Close to when you're surrounded by this many white people, you don't even know. You don't even know. Do you wake up every morning and actively think, "Hmm, I'm white today"? No, I just go about my day. Yeah, I, like, go about my day. Like, I don't think, I don't, like, think of myself being, like, hmm, me as Black Allison, I'm going to live my Black life on this day because I am Black. And, like, me as Allison just, like, lives my life. And if I, like, am hating on another group of people, I'm going to, like, do the, like, common denominator. Yeah. What was I going to okay. say? I was going to say something before your rant. I don't think, like, necessarily I would move because of politics. It would be, like, jobs, mm -hmm. um, housing prices, like, where I could afford to live. Mm -hmm. Right now, nowhere. But, no. you know? Tent. Not even that. I can't even afford a tent. I can go move don't into move. Camp Hope downtown. I could enroll as a nun. <laughs> okay. That's the only way. <laughs> That's the only thing I could afford right now. <laughs> but yeah, like, yes, it would be nice to have like po like political leaders that align with like my values. But like, I know that's not always going to be possible. Mm -hmm. in the current state of our country. Yeah, or we're you know allowing wow. tens of thousands of non-U.S. citizens into our country. I feel like a lot of people talk about Florida and be like, DeSantis is the second coming of Christ. Like, people are like, DeSantis is the second com coming of Christ. He flipped Florida. Yeah. But it was not, in fact, DeSantis that flipped Florida. It was, like, the Cuban Americans and the Puerto Ricans who flipped Florida because they do not like socialism, and so they, in fact, did not like Biden or Bernie. Um, exactly. And, like, 
Florida, like I said, I in my notes I said Florida did not switch, just switch because of DeSantis. Like Florida switched because the people there, instead of fleeing to like Texas or like Alabama, like held their ground and said we are going to be the change. And like yeah, if exactly. Mm-hmm. that's the only way that we're going to change and it's like very frustrating because like sometimes it does not feel worth it but like we can make it worth it like like if Arizona had not had the issues we had Arizona would be red like Georgia yeah. would be red. like the, all these places the only, the only place that I don't think it's possible is California yeah the only yeah the only thing I don't think is possible is California like I am seeing a lot of the up and coming like I think a lot of the up and coming influence are influencers are much more right-leaning right now and a lot of them are moving to a lot of them are moving to these really like red states and i think that we're gonna definitely see like they say like gen z is like weird split because i feel like there's a very very small majority of gen z that is like these like super chronically online liberals but i do believe the vast majority of gen z is right leaning because the vast majority of gen z is seeing how we're getting screwed over by the millennials yeah exactly like we're getting screwed over by how the people of the generation before us are voting and we're seeing how that is affecting us faster than how the generation before the millennials voted for them Mm-hmm. like um and so i think that there is a very strong possibility is that if we keep if we keep occupy like stay and occupy these blue states and like start like actively like voting and like prioritizing and being the change like a lot of these states are going to end up like florida where like these like like well, these like marginalized communities that they believe are um, marginalized communities that they believed are like so oppressed that they have to vote vote less so that they can get like these free handouts mm-hmm. are gonna switch. Like, look at what is happening with the look. Look at what's happening with like the Hispanic community going on right now, and like the Latin American community. Like a lot, a lot of them are switching their votes because of how how everything is being pushed with like gender affirming care, and then also like they're very pro-life because like a lot of them come from like catholic families Mm -hmm. so they are very pro-life and they're seeing that like these blue politicians are or these democrat politicians are voting for all these horrific abortion laws and they're like we that's not what that is not what we're for like Mm -hmm. like not like Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people are like, well, one bill can't, or one law can't change somebody's opinion. But I feel like a, the abortion, like abortion issues is what could change the one thing that could possibly change people's opinions completely. Mm-hmm. Not to get. Especially if they actually yeah. watch mm-hmm. or like listen to exactly what one is. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like the media is trying to convince us that, like, we're more left than the other. Like, we're more left, our country is more left than out ever, but I completely disagree. Mm-hmm. I am very much seeing in the, I'm very much seeing in the very near future that we are making a very, I wouldn't say it's a very, like, super swing to the right, but I think that there's a very gradual building of more young Republicans growing mm-hmm. in I think the young Republicans are more willing to vote. They're more willing to get involved and they're more vocal about it. Like not to give like a proper lobe stuff, but like look how much the Grand Canyon has blown up in the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Like look at like look how much like Grand Canyon's blown up in the past couple of years. Like look how much like these organizations like Turning Point and stuff are blowing up in the past couple of years. Like yeah. they're blowing and like look at how much like like look how sick and tired people are getting of thing getting tired of like things like what like what Disney's doing where they're replacing all these things or like how tired are they getting of like these kind of older Gen Zers, like the I would say like the older kind of smaller section of Gen Zers that are like basically millennials that are like respect our pronouns and stuff and being like, mm-hmm. no, you're getting crazy, like you're getting ridiculous and they're like switching to this and like think about how many nfl players and like influencers are like coming out as republican and like talking about all this stuff and are like um becoming like greater advocates for what they're standing for i think the biggest thing like Mm. i think there are a lot more like 
conservatives or like republicans but they just haven't found their voice yet because it's hard to speak up because it does seem like the media is controlling this narrative that the left is like the they have the majority they're gonna win everything and so like you just feel discouraged but you just have to find your voice and and i think more people will slowly start to find it and then we'll see a change I guarantee you, if you asked anyone of our generation, if they felt more comfortable talking about their politics with someone who's liberal than who was someone who's conservative, they would say conservative every single time. Yes. Because if you are liberal and discar- disagree with someone who else is liberal about like something, um, even like something the smallest things, you'll be absolutely torn apart. But I feel like li- like conservatives can be like much more welcoming to outside ideas. Yeah. And I do think that we do struggle in some places in seeing like. Um, I do, like, I'm not saying that, like, we're, like, the perfect party, but I am saying, like, we struggle in some places and, like, seeing compromises on stuff, but I also am, like, I just, I do, like, I wholeheartedly feel like there is more room to compromise on that side and stuff. And I feel like we're willing to listen and our go-to is not screaming because that's the left's go-to is, you know, just really loudly screaming for their favorite move but we'll we actually use our listening skills will we agree not necessarily but mm-hmm. we will listen to what you have to say yeah like that's one of the reasons that ted cruz is my absolute favorite senator i think that he does a fantastic job of like agreeing i feel like he does a fantastic job of like willing to like negotiate and like understand compromise and i know yeah. a lot of republicans do not like him because he sounds very much like a tv evangelist but mm-hmm. I really like him. Also, he does look like a like Civil War general, and I'm weirdly attracted to that. Okay. I need to add something unhinged to this episode. We couldn't go through it completely hinged. That would be that would that just wouldn't be us. Mm-hmm. Civil War general. Out of all the things to describe somebody. Okay, but have you seen this, like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't know what mm-hmm. you're talking about, but yeah. yeah look up a current, look at every, everyone, go to your computer, look up a current picture of Ted Cruz, and you cannot tell me that if you, if someone told you that was General Ted Cruz, who, like, led the, I don't know which side, the Confederates is the bad side. Union? But he's from Texas. He led the union into in union into battle. You would be like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, oh yeah, I totally remember le- learning about him in history. That's what I'm going to tell my kids. I'm going to tell my kids that he was a Civil War general. And this is why you cannot homeschool your children because you yeah. tell them lies. This is going to be the benefit that I am not going to homeschool my kids because you would tell them lies like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you would make it convincing, and then they would tell all their friends, and then their friends would be like, what? And they'll go up to their teachers, and their teachers will be like, you know, I could like, what? I thought it was Neapolitan. I thought it was Napoleon ice cream until I was 15. Okay. <laughs> like, I thought, it, I didn't, like, I read, like, I thought it was Napoleon so much that I read it as Napoleon. I was like, that's what Napoleon and so then when I finally learned about Napoleon in school, I was like, <laughs> that's not how you spell it. It's with, obviously, with an E-O. <laughs> obviously. I also read fascinating as fantasticating. I mean, I read Zaza's pizza with two Zs, so. Yeah. Recently. I- I don't have dyslexia, but I definitely add letters, and I don't know if that is a form of dyslexia. <laughs> I'm like a maple tree. You've drained everything you've got from me <laughs> when it comes to this topic. There's I'm not much like, more you can. You might as well just go make syrup now. Well, I was like, I think we actually answered all of our questions, sort of, sort without of. saying them, but we went on some really made some really great points and mm-hmm. yeah pop news of the week pop news pop news imagine if like pop news is like 
just popcorn. Just popcorn or a different a different pop each day, each week. Pop news. Pop news. And today we have a Pepsi. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking pop yeah, news. I was thinking, I was thinking like pop news as like the sound that it makes when you open a Snapple bottle. <laughs> and so like every, every week I would just open a Snapple bottle, but it's like a different flavor every week. Like today we have orange mango. <laughs> now I want Snapple. I haven't had Snapple in like years. Pop culture news of this week. This isn't actually pop culture, but I don't have a place for this. And for the second week in a row, I was going to talk about Ed Sheeran, and then I forgot to look up the stuff, and I found it boring. Um, but in case anyone is wondering, Ed Sheeran was getting um, sued by Lionel Richie's team about thinking overthinking of you, um because they like copied a chord progression in Lionel Richie's song but then they were like y'all are being crazy and this is stupid and we shouldn't be suing over something like this and it got thrown out so that's the Ed Sheeran thing not nothing not much interesting however we do have updates on Prince Harry's lawsuit uh, I discovered that Prince Harry is not in one not two but three lawsuits right now so, um, he's suing the news group newspapers over phone hacking, and he's also suing Associated Newspapers over the same thing. But um, this one we're talking about is the Daily Mail one, which is what I mentioned a couple weeks ago. Um, so he is so they went to trial on Friday, and the trial is supposed to last about seven weeks. Um, he is not testified yet. He is going to testify in mid-June. So I think he's coming back to the UK to testify for other for his other two trials, but he's supposed to be testified and cross-examined in mid-June. Um, but the Daily Mail, like, basically, it was opening um, shindigs, and the Daily Mail, like, firmly deny any allegations claiming that they had any phone hacking and they said that there's a real concern that there's been a highly publicized smearing of the reputation of the board and board members and they were basically like if the things that we get if the information we get is from a third party source then what how is it illegal if we got it from a third party and didn't know how it was gotten and i was like was it gotten from a third party or did one of your journalists like hack their phones so they're like denying this completely and they've already but I think that's something that's made them look very guilty is that they have settled more than 600 claims of phone hacking outside of court. So like when you settle something outside of court it basically is essentially meaning like they paid off they paid off some money to make it go away. Yeah. So over 600 claims. So for over 600 Claims are coming your way, basically saying that you hacked their phone. You probably hacked their phone. Even if maybe a hundred people were, or a hundred claims were coming your way, it would still be like, hmm, that's suspicious. Anyways, that is all for us this week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of I Don't Want to Talk About Politics. Check us out on Instagram at IDWTAP underscore podcast. Also, check out our personal Instagrams, which are at Allie.Joy173 and CalistaJ1776. Um, check out our references, which, as always, are linked below in the description, and they will actually be linked this week because I got busy and forgot last week. Calista, what will we be talking about next week? Next week, we'll be concluding May by doing a deep dive into how our country's healthcare system treats our veterans. It's incredibly sad how these people risk their lives for our country and then end up on the street. I feel like it sounds very sadistic to say I'm excited for this episode, but I was very, I really enjoyed how our chemical abortions episode, oh my, I just twitched again. I really enjoyed how our, our chemical abortions episode 
went and I feel like we learned a lot of new things from it and like this is something I don't know very much about and so I'm very excited to kind of like do some learning do some educating and we can learn together as a little podcast family yes um close do you have any any more thoughts for this week no I don't think so happy enjoy May everybody well the rest of your week, everybody. If it's sunny there, enjoy the sunshine. It's been like in the 80s here all week, and I got to go to the lake yesterday. It has been in the 80s and sunny, except for about 20 minutes, both yesterday and today. It was downpouring, and yesterday the rain was bouncing off the pavement and flooding the. Uh, parking lot at my what? work and it just happened to land right as I had to go back inside for my lunch break or after my lunch break so I was soaked for the rest of the night it was not fun it does not sound like fun I was freezing I was sweating my booty off at work yesterday <laughs> I don't know why I was inside, but I was helping someone try on a dress and like they had a corset and I've never tried a corset before. So she and I really went through an emotional journey together of me learning how to to tie a corset. And she didn't even like the dress at the end of the day. And so I was so mad. She was like, this dress is really ugly. And I was like, you made me tie that corset for you to think the dress is ugly. But was and- the dress ugly? No, it was beautiful. If the, it didn't, it was not her color. It was not her color. I know you're thinking it's white. No, some of our dresses are like pink tinted. It was, yeah, it was like a very, it was like a purplish pink tinted. And so it was not her color. She had very like dark orange hair. Yeah. But the dress itself is very pretty. Ooh. I wonder if it looked pretty on you. I'm still on my hunt to find your dress. Okay. <laughs> We got distracted. What were we gonna do? Yeah. We were trying to end this. Yes. Once, we were. Okay. <laughs> Once again, thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I usually end it, so that made me sad that you ended it instead, but it's fine, I guess. Well, you started laughing. <laughs>